Welcome to this video. Today we are going to talk about Alphabet, the huge holding behind Google. Alphabet Incorporate was founded in 1998 as a search engine company under the name Google Incorporate. Since then, Google has grown to become the most popular search engine in the world, controlling 92% of the global search market. But in the last two decades, the company has expanded far beyond search engines. It reorganized in 2015 and established Alphabet as a holding company. The parent company owns Google as well as a number of other businesses. Some of these companies are Google subsidiaries while others are owned separately by Alphabet. With a market capitalization of 1.75 trillion dollars as of March 2022, Alphabet has grown to become one of the world's largest technology conglomerates. For 2021, the company reported a net income of 76 billion dollars on revenue of 182 billion dollars. Advertising accounts for the vast majority of Alphabet's revenue. The company provides performance advertising, which allows advertisers to connect with their users in a way that is measurable. It also sells brand advertising, which aims to increase users' brand awareness and affinity. Thus, advertising is an important part of Alphabet's strategy and has influenced many of its acquisition decisions. However, Google earns money from a variety of sources including app sales, in-app purchases, hardware, and licensing and service fees, including those from Google Cloud and other products. To strengthen these businesses, the company has made acquisitions. Alphabet is constantly on the lookout for new technologies that can help it expand its business portfolio. Acquiring smaller companies frequently eliminates emerging competitors reducing Alphabet's competition. This is one of the reasons Alphabet is currently the target of an antitrust lawsuit field in October 2020 by the United States Department of Justice and 11 state attorneys general. But now, we will take a closer look at some of the company's major acquisitions. So, the first company is Mandiant and the business type is cybersecurity. The acquisition price – $5.4 billion. The company, which focuses on cybersecurity testing and incident response, will be integrated into Google's cloud computing business to help improve cloud data security. And so, let's move on to the next business and it's called Fitbit and it's in the business type wearable fitness devices and app. The acquisition price. 2.1 billion dollars. Fitbit was founded in 2007 by James Park and Eric Friedman with the intention of developing a wearable product that would use wireless technology to improve users' health and fitness. Smartwatches, armband fitness trackers, a digital fitness tracking application and related gear, accessories and services are among the company's offerings. After first announcing the deal in November 2019, Google closed the Fitbit acquisition in January 2021, adding to its wearable device lineup following its acquisition of Timex smartwatch technology in 2019. The transaction was completed after European Union antitrust regulators approved the acquisition with conditions aimed at protecting users' health data and preserving competition in the wearable tech sector. Google emphasized that the acquisition is about devices, not data, and promised that user data would not be used for Google Ads. Next business, Locker. Business type, business intelligence software and data analytics with an acquisition price of $2.6 billion. Leoptab founded Locker in 2011 
to help businesses easily extract and analyze data. Most legacy business intelligence systems demanded engineering and programming expertise from users in order to extract and analyze data. Locker streamlined the process by modifying programming queries to read more like natural languages like English. Users could now perform data analytics without having to speak code. In June 2019, Google announced its intention to acquire Locker. Locker was acquired by Google in 2020 and its capabilities will be leveraged through the Google Cloud service. Locker at Google Cloud accelerates customers' ability to analyze data, deliver business intelligence, and build data-driven applications. By the way, there is also a video about business intelligence if you are interested. The next business, Nest. Business type, smart home products, with an acquisition price of $3.2 billion. Tony Fadel and Matt Rogers founded Nest Labs in 2010. Fadel and Rogers both left Apple's iPod and iPhone development divisions to launch a technology company aimed at revolutionizing the thermostat, turning it into a sensor-driven, Wi-Fi-enabled, learning and programmable device. Google bought Nest in 2014 and merged it with Google's home division to form Google Nest, which sells a variety of smart home products such as security alarm systems, or Wi-Fi routers and home assistance devices. So let's move on to the next company called DeepMind. The Alphabet subsidiary was founded in 2010 and acquired by Google in 2014. DeepMind specializes in the development of self-learning artificial intelligence. The company received special attention when the software they developed, AlphaGo, significantly beat one of the world's best players in the Asian game Go. In addition, WaveNet is a part of DeepMind, a neural network that Google uses at the basis for this text-to-speech reading program in Google Assistant. And now, the last and biggest company on the list, YouTube. Business type, online video sharing platform and with the acquisition price of 1.65 billion dollars, YouTube already made an ad revenue of 15.5 billion dollars in 2019. YouTube was founded in 2005 by three former PayPal employees who believed that ordinary people would enjoy sharing their home videos on the internet. YouTube had already served over 10 million videos per day by the summer of 2006. YouTube began looking for a buyer due to both technical issues that come with rapid growth and a lack of commercial success. Meanwhile, Google's own video platform, Google Video, which debuted in 2005, had struggled to gain traction. Google acquired YouTube in late 2006, providing it with a new, powerful video platform. YouTube has grown into a significant source of ad revenue for Alphabet, as well as revenue from premium and YouTube TV subscriptions. After the pandemic, YouTube's ad revenue is expected to be over $30 billion in 2022. That's some impressive numbers. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching. If you like the video and the channel, consider subscribing and sharing this channel. And if you have other ideas for videos, just let me know in the comments. And thanks for watching. By the way, if you are interested in starting an online business but you need some ideas or you are looking for ways to gain passive income, I have for both topics a video so make sure to check them out 
or if you are interested in buying stocks or high dividend stocks, I have also a video for them, so make sure to check them out. Thanks.